Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening fourth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number 25. All right, so I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. And if you don't, that's okay. Check the link below or somewhere around this video, which will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode, along with all the other episodes in the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. So now is the time. Go ahead and solve number one and number two. I want you to really focus here. I want you to throw down your best as if these two questions happen to be on the FSA test and then come on back to check your work. I'll see you soon. Welcome back fourth grade. All right. Oh, you know what I'm noticing? I want to go ahead and identify what kind of question this is here, but I forgot on my copy to list the question type. That's okay though. I will fix it on yours. If for some reason it is not fixed on yours, it that's because your teacher is on it and your teacher must have printed out this worksheet before I had the opportunity to fix it. So give your teacher an air five <laughs> and you can just do like I'm doing. All right. So I'm seeing four answer choices here for number one. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's a multiple choice question. Multiple choice. All right, which means that there should only be one correct answer, but we'll go through all of them just to make sure. Number one says, what is the measure in degrees or with this little sign right there of the missing angle? So where is the missing? Oh right here. Here is the missing angle right there. We have to figure out how much it measures. So it could be 59 degrees, 90 degrees, 121 degrees, and 139 degrees. Now there's two right away that I'm looking at just based on the looks of this angle that I believe are incorrect. But we are also going to prove it mathematically as well. But I'm going to take my super fancy schmancy piece of paper, which happens to be my right corner checker, and put this on right here. So check this out. When I try to measure this angle and I line up one of them right here, I'm lining up this ray. Do you see how it's wider than a right the other side? It's wider. It opens up wider than my right angle piece of paper square corner, right? which means that this should be an obtuse angle. It should be greater than 90 degrees. Because this should be an obtuse angle or greater than it, I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate 59 and 90 degrees because this is definitely wider than a right. But we also wanna prove this mathematically. And so when we find the answer, we will verify that it was indeed bigger than those two, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about what we know. We know that this part right here, this line, that a straight line 
has a measure of 180 degrees. So this straight line right here is 180 degrees. We know part of the angle is 59 degrees, but we don't know the other part. But if we were to join those two get together, 59 degrees plus our missing angle, we would get a total of 180 degrees. So what we can do, since we know our total, we can remove 59 degrees to figure out what's left. So which operation would we be using there? Would we be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? We would be subtracting, right? We know our total is 180 degrees for that straight line. We know that 59 degrees is an angle that we know, and so we can use subtraction to figure out the missing part that we don't know. In other words, what plus 59 equals 180? We use the inverse operation to figure that out. So let's subtract. Zero minus nine is, oh, we need to regroup. That means we take a 10, that becomes seven. Give a 10, that becomes 10. 10 minus nine is one. Seven minus five is two. And one minus nothing is one. So our missing angle has a measure of 121 degrees. If you happen to have gotten 139 degrees, that may have been, you may have thought to subtract, but you probably said zero minus nine is nine, eight minus five is three and one. But you forgot here to regroup. So that's not correct. And that's okay if you made that mistake, make the mistakes now, learn from the mistakes now. That way when you get to the test or any other kind of exposure to subtraction, you don't make that mistake again, okay? Totally okay, make the mistakes now, learn from them now. And let's go ahead and check out number two. Let's identify the question type. Ooh, we've got rows, we've got columns. It's one of my favorite types the matching item response question. All right, let's read it. It says Tracy is adding angles to create other angles. So another word for adding would be joining. Tracy is joining angles to create other angles, right? Fill in the circles to select the angles Tracy can use to create a 117 degree angle and a 79 degree angle. Okay, 117 and 89, those are the totals here. And what Tracy is doing is taking some of these degree measurements and putting them together to find the total, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I am looking and, it, you know, it could be any number of different combinations. What you have to do here is just play around with some of them. I'm looking at 117 though, and I'm thinking, hmm, if this is the total and I'm adding them together, that means that when I add the ones place, it needs to equal seven, seven. And I know that four, four and three equal seven, but if I round this to 20 plus 50, that would only give me 70 and that's not high enough. But I do have a three in the ones place here and a four here. So let me try 54 plus 63 to see if that gets me to 117. I put 53, I meant 54. All right, so four plus three, I just said was seven and five plus six is 11. Oh my goodness, there it is. So we can go ahead and bubble in B and C because when we join those two angles together, it creates a wider angle of 117 degrees. And by the way, um, what kind of angle is 117 degrees? Is it acute, right, or obtuse? It is obtuse, that's just extra. That's just an extra teachable moment right there. That's what we call that, boys and girls. Okay. Now we're on 89. 89 is now the total. So what can we join together to equal 89? Well, that worked out for us last time when we, when we took a look at the ones place, right? Let's take a look at the ones place for 89. It ends in a nine. So what could we add together in the ones place to get 89? Hmm. Maybe three and six I'm seeing. And let's round it. Let's see like 
20. If I rounded this to 20 plus 70 gives me about 90, which is close, right? So let me go ahead and add it up just to make sure. All right, three plus six is nine and two plus six is eight there it is 89 degrees so we're gonna bubble in which two letters e and h you got it all right so go ahead and take this opportunity to pause make any corrections any adjustments that you need to rewind if you need to and then when you're ready press play to get some more helpful videos that I'm gonna throw your way. So the very first link that I'd like for you to click is to the McCarthy Math 155 series. You wanna check out unit 14 because that has a ton of videos on angles, just focuses on angles. So if you know that you need some more help with that, I break it all down for you. You should totally check it out. Now you do have to become a member in order to access the videos and the worksheets that go with this program. I absolutely want you to try it out for free for seven days. I want to make sure that it's the right fit for you. So that way you know exactly what's involved with a membership. Teachers, if you are interested in becoming a member, this is something that you can totally share with your students. And I walk you through how to do just that in the tutorials tab on my website if you check out video number five. There are so many teachers, schools, districts even that are using McCarthy Math 155 as their daily math intervention program for third through fifth grade. And the reason why they love using it is because the students love it. They look forward to it every day. I get countless emails saying, oh my gosh, I love this so much. And honestly, those emails, they make my day. I love getting that feedback from you guys. I love getting that feedback from y'all and building those connections. So thank you so much. Totally check it out. Tons of videos there. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, okay? The next link to focus on is the How to Pass the Math FSA series. Now this, the link that's there will take you to the same standard that we just worked on in this video. So it'll give you a little bit extra practice. The How to Pass the Math FSA series was the very first series that I created on YouTube several years ago, back when the FSA was a computer-based test for fifth grade. Now it's a paper-based test, so that's why I created the Math FSA Boot Camp series to reflect the paper-based style of questions. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA provides great practice. It's still standards-based, just some of the questions will match the, the old computer-based version, so just be aware of that. I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, at McCarthy Math Academy. You can also find me on YouTube, at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, can you do me a quick little second of a favor and, and smash that like button, not for me or to make me feel good, but to support my mission because there are so many students out there who struggle with math and I am on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many students as I possibly can. So every like that these videos get help to reach more students. So you are transforming the lives of somebody else when you do that. So thank you for smashing that like button. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You all are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers getting ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait to see you all on video number 26. So I will see you soon.